you know, Anthony says that you 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 get a you have a better appreciation for your food by doing this class. So all alone today, Ashley's with the baby behind the camera here. And I wanted to do a video talking about the mono cleanse. I did a video already, but that was just discussing like my favorite squash during the cleanse. In this video, we're going to get into the results and what I experienced on the cleanse. So I decided after finishing the home that I wanted to do some sort of cleanse because I was exposed to a lot of toxins working on the house. And we've done the liver cleanse, we've done the 28 day cleanse, the thyroid cleanse. So we've done a lot of the medical medium cleanses, but there was one that we hadn't done yet and I was eager to do. And that was the mono cleanse. So this cleanse is great for if you're dealing with like gut problems, if you're dealing with problems with the liver, uh, if you've got all these weird food allergies that you never had before, or if you just want to starve those little pathogens that live in our bodies, like bacteria and viruses. This mono cleanse is a gentle cleanse and you're cleansing your whole body. So in Cleanse to Heal, Anthony, he lays out six different mono cleanse options. There's uh, bananas, there's papaya, there's bananas and papaya, there's potatoes, there's peas, and then the winter squash one. And the winter squash one is the one I chose, and then uh, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, or green beans. So you yeah, definitely have more options with the winter squash cleanse. And winter squash is in season right now, so I thought it would just be a perfect opportunity to not only get uh, squash that is, is fresh and in season right now, but to do this cleanse. And then with all these different options, the optional piece was lettuce, right? So you could have bananas with lettuce or papayas with lettuce. Lettuce is the optional piece. And when you're looking at lettuce and picking which lettuce you're gonna eat as your option, you wanna focus on the lettuce that is most gentle on the body. That's gonna be your green butterhead lettuce, red butterhead lettuce, um, red leaf lettuce is another one. Those are some lettuces that are very gentle on the intestinal tract. Now in Cleanse to Heal, Anthony, he says, if you're gonna do any of these mono cleanses, that you should at least try it for a week at minimum. Now when I was choosing the cleanse, I wanted my cleanse more focused on the liver and I felt like, okay, winter squash, you know, that's a good overall thing for the whole body, but I wanted to pick some stuff out that I knew was gonna focus on the liver. And with the liver cleanse, you eat a lot of asparagus and Brussels sprouts. So what I decided is, okay, I'm gonna do the winter squash, but then I'm gonna do asparagus and Brussels sprouts at night, and then that will, allow my mono cleanse to be more liver focused. So here's the rundown on what I did on my mono cleanse. So you start the morning with your your normal morning cleanse stuff. So I had my I still had my lemon water, 32 ounces of lemon water every morning. I still had my 32 ounces of celery juice every morning. And then once I had those things, I would switch over to my winter squash. Now, the first three days I was uh, cutting my winter squash, steaming it, and then I was eating it cubed. After about three days, I got pretty bored of eating cubed uh, winter squash. And I was taking the optional lettuce and I was making like uh, cubed winter squash tacos and that's how I was eating them and by, by day three I decided that I was going to try blending the winter squash and if you didn't see that video that we did on winter squash and my favorite five winter squash on this cleanse go check that out 
because I talk more about uh, the different squashes and what I found to be the best squashes uh, during this cleanse. And what we did with the, the squash was we left the skin on. And by leaving the skin on and then blending it, it allowed my body to better digest the winter squash. Because sometimes if you're oversensitive, the skin of the winter squash can be a little uh, hard for your body to digest. Now on this cleanse, don't let yourself go hungry. If you feel like you need some food, eat some more squash. That's this cleanse. You're eating squash throughout the entire day. Now typically, two medium-sized squash equals one bowl. And I would have two bowls uh, a day. I typically would have one bowl in the morning and then one bowl in the afternoon and that typically got me good throughout the entire day. I was also uh, drinking water and Anthony suggests at least one liter of water a day. I was still drinking the water and you could, you could do lemon honey water which was cool because you know you got a little something sweet out of it and I would drink, drink those throughout the day which the water is going to help you detox, it's going to flush, you know, flush the body. So it's important to, to definitely stay hydrated and drink a lot of water on this cleanse. And then at night for dinner, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, or green beans. I didn't do the green beans, I just stuck to asparagus and Brussels sprouts. And how I was doing it was I would, uh, one night I would just have all a bunch of asparagus, and you can eat as much asparagus as you want. And then the next night, I would have a lot of Brussels sprouts, and I'd eat as much Brussels sprouts as I wanted. But you can also have green beans, that's an option too. I just, you know, I wanted this more liver focused, so I just stuck to those two. But you can do it however you, you want, as long as you're, you're, you're in those guidelines laid out in the mono cleanse chapter of Cleanse to Heal. So at night, you know, I usually have something sweet at night, and it was tough on this cleanse because I couldn't do that. So I ended up just drinking coconut water at night and that was kind of like my, my, uh, my sweet treat. And Anthony says in this cleanse you can drink coconut water and that actually counts towards your one liter that you're drinking throughout the day. Elderberry syrup kits are here. If you enjoy our videos and want to support the channel, these kits are a great way to help support us and support yourselves at the same time. We take one tablespoon a day for daily immune system support and one tablespoon three times a day when we feel a cold or flu coming on. These kits make 16 ounces, so it's enough for your whole family. Pick up your kit today at thatrootlife.com. Let's talk about the detox. So if you've ever done Anthony's liver cleanse, I mean, you can really feel your liver detoxing once you get further and further along in the cleanse. With this, the mono eating cleanse is not meant to just cleanse, cleanse, cleanse. It's a very gentle cleanse. So you are definitely releasing toxins from the liver and all the other organs in the body because this is a whole body cleanse but it's nothing compared to like the liver cleanse where you you can actually feel the, lev the liver cleansing stuff out towards the end of the liver cleanse. So let's talk about some of the things I noticed while I was on this cleanse. So I definitely had some cravings and it was like right around day three, day five, I started having all of these, uh, these cravings. Like I said earlier, I kind of have a little sweet tooth and that's what I was craving was something sweet. Now that eventually just went away and then came back right at the end of the 28 days. So like day 26, 27, and even 28. And I think that was just me looking forward to like being, being done with the cleanse. <laughs> but one thing that helps with cravings is the sodium cluster salts in the celery juice. And because I was getting my celery juice in every single day, that was actually helping with a lot of these cravings. So you're probably asking yourself, well, you're only eating three foods for 28 days straight. Aren't you worried about your body becoming deficient in 
need certain minerals or vitamins? And the answer to that is you're already deficient on things. This mono cleanse is going to help you not be deficient. Your digestive tract is just filled with rancid fats, rotting proteins, toxic heavy metals, pathogens like viruses and bacteria, and they're preventing your body from properly absorbing these minerals, these vitamins, these nutrients. So by doing this mono cleanse, you're actually cleansing those things out of your body, which then allows your body to properly absorb nutrients again. So I noticed around day 12, I was getting really bad acid reflux. And that went on from like day 12 throughout the whole cleanse, which, you know, it makes sense because you, what you're really working your digestive tract and a lot of stuff could in, you could end up detoxing stuff and then it ends up coming up the esophagus and you're getting that acid reflux so I, I also had like headaches you know four or five days out of the 28 days I, I was dealing with some headaches but I'm not a hundred percent convinced that was uh, caused by detoxing that could have just been caused by you know, uh, not eating and eating uh, consistently throughout that day or not drinking enough water. Sometimes I get headaches from stuff like that. So I'm not convinced that was that was part of the cleanse. And, you know, I was just talking about like not eating consistently through the cleanse. Well, a lot of times when I wasn't eating in pattern, I was dealing with fatigue. And that's something you can clearly notice especially when you don't eat a lot of fats. Uh, fats typically will carry you over for a long period of time, but when you're eating you know, just squash, there's not really a whole lot of fat in it. So it's, you know, it's definitely one of those starchy things that's gonna carry you through a day, so you don't need to eat a whole lot of it. But um, I, it, I noticed when I wasn't eating pattern, I was dealing with, with some fatigue. And the good outweighs all the bad I just talked about. So earlier I was talking about my energy. Well, I think that the, the problem with my, my fatigue was because I wasn't eating on schedule. But other than that, I had great energy throughout the entire cleanse. I felt very light and I even lost a bunch of weight. And that was noticeable like five days in, Ashley was like, wow, you, your stomach looks a lot, a lot thinner which makes sense, right? Because your body's not having to work as hard to process all the stuff you're putting in it. So you're kind of giving your liver a break and you're making everything very easy on your digestive tract. So there's no room for your body to become inflamed uh, like it would be with those other foods. Oh, another thing, I slept amazing. One thing I noticed when I, when I got off the cleanse is I was waking up more throughout the night and then I was getting up earlier where when I was on this cleanse I like slept throughout the whole night and I even was able to sleep in a little bit which you know with the newborn and stuff <laughs> typically isn't something that happens but uh, yeah I was definitely getting some sleep on this cleanse which, which was which was a nice little break. So coming off the cleanse, I didn't just jump right back into eating a bunch of fat and we don't eat the troublemaker foods. Um, and how we eat in a day, we've done videos on that. So go check out our videos we've done on how we eat in a day. I was able to ease my way back into the heavy metal smoothie, which was out of this world because I hadn't had it in like 28 days. Uh, it was nice to eat some fruit again. You know, I was definitely missing that sweetness from the fruit, and I was able to have a bunch of other veggies, and that's typically what we eat during the day. And then at night, the first night, I think I had some potatoes with some cashew cheese. The cashew cheese, you know, you're using cashews, little nuts. So, you know, you want to ease your way back into it. You don't want to just go all in with the fats right off this cleanse. So one thing I noticed was once I started introducing those fats again into my diet, I started to notice I started feeling heavy, where I was feeling light on the cleanse before. I started to feel a little more fatigue, tiredness. Uh, I was definitely dealing with 
some tingles and some numbness that I, you know, wasn't experiencing before. I even dealt with some heart palpitations. So you really have to ease your way back into this. Don't just go all in because you could end up dealing with some symptoms again. That's a lot of, it's a, a big burden on your liver after feeding it all these great things, jumping back into something that it's not used to. So looking back at this cleanse, I definitely noticed that towards the end of the cleanse, that squash, I swear that squash was getting sweeter and sweeter and sweeter as the cleanse went on. And you know, Anthony says that you 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 get a you have a better appreciation for your food by doing this cleanse. And yeah, I definitely noticed that. What's great about this cleanse is the mono cleanse is low on fat. The only fat you're eating are from the foods you're consuming on this cleanse, which are all healthy fats, which is very different than what you hear nowadays. It's, you know, where are you getting your protein? Protein this, you need more protein, get more protein, which, you know, protein is just a fat. It's an unhealthy fat. So you're overburdening your liver, you're preventing your body from detoxing, you're decreasing your, your bile reserve, and you're slowly burning out your pancreas. So how are you supposed to remove these toxic heavy metals? How are you gonna remove the radiation? How are you gonna remove all the pathogens, the viruses and the bacteria that live in our bodies? How are you gonna remove all this DDT when you're going to the doctor and the doctor is telling you protein, 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 which is then just preventing the body from detoxing. And we need to detox these things out of our bodies. And those same doctors that are telling you protein, 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 they don't even know why you're sick in the first place. They don't know what's causing your autoimmune condition. They don't know why you've been chronically ill for the last three years. And you were just following trend to trend to trend and never really healing. So this is why it's so important to, to cleanse, to cleanse the body. And you know, the mono cleanse is just one cleanse, but in all of Anthony's books, he lays out all these different cleanse that can heal different parts of your body. And this is extremely important because no one is cleansing their bodies. We're anti-cleansing, you know, until we get so sick that we start to develop autoimmune conditions and chronic illness. And then we go from trend to trend to trend and never really get the answers we're looking for. And then, hey, maybe we stumble upon Anthony's information we poo-poo it, and then we're still sick, still fumbling around, and then we come back, and it's like, boom, this information, it's all laid out in his books, all these different cleanses, all these different detoxes. It's extremely important to start doing this stuff. So if you're chronically ill and you're wondering why the needle's not moving, this could be that reason. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed learning about my results from the mono cleanse that I did. If you've done this cleanse already, drop us a comment and let us know how it went for you. Or if you're new to doing this mono cleanse and you wanna give it a go and you have questions, drop us a comment and let us know what your questions are. All right, well, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.